afternoon in Statesboro, Georgia. These fans will be inside Paulson Stadium very, very soon for a titanic matchup in NCAA 1AA college football and the Southern Conference. Second ranked Furman, the Purple Paladins, set to take on number four Georgia Southern. The headlines this weekend in the Atlanta Journal Constitution and USA Today tell the story Furman and Georgia Southern. It's a titanic matchup. Well, hi there, Dave Weekly. Happy to be alongside Ethan Horton again this afternoon. Ethan, we have a terrific game coming up. Two juggernauts in one double-A football. Should be great. No, I think so, Dave. I think when you look at these two teams, back in 1985, Georgia Southern knocked off Furman. 1988, Furman returned to favor. Now you're looking at the national media. Adrian Peterson, he's getting his number retired. NFL scouts, what more can you ask for? Yeah, lots of NFL scouts in the house. We've got two terrific offensive stars in this game that are going to be making a little bit of history. Lewis Ivory of Furman, Adrian Peterson of Georgia Southern. Both these guys won the Walter Payton Award. This will be the first time in college football history that Payton Award winners have been facing off against each other on the same field. Adrian Peterson won this award two years ago when he scored an amazing 28 touchdowns. Last year, Lewis Ivory got the title as he rushed for nearly 2,300 yards. And what a terrific career Adrian Peterson has had here in Statesboro. He's a legendary figure already, and he's still got eligibility left. Check these amazing career numbers. Has rushed for more than 100 yards in every game except one, and he scored 107 touchdowns. But also, Lewis Ivory, he's no shabby back either, Dave. He's a kid that rushed for over 301 yards last season. He also won, I think, the award in this game right here because he put up a Phenomenal number, although Peterson did not play. Lewis Ivory, he was the best back on the field that afternoon. Unbelievable. Rushed for over 300 yards in this game. When we looked ahead in the schedules to this matchup, we thought we had a great chance for one versus two. Georgia Southern was undefeated until last week. East Tennessee State forced their way into the storyline of this one. They upset the Eagles at the Mini Dome in Johnson City, 1916. Yeah, also, when you look at this offense, they were not very efficient. Four turnovers, six trips inside the red zone, three Three field goals, three fumbles, but offensively, they hadn't had, I think, this type of offensive performance in a long time. But also, they were playing without J.R. Revere. He was also sacked four times in this game. He came in late in the third quarter. He tried to engineer a comeback. They fell short. Offensively now, Dave, he's wearing a big brace. How effective can he be today, and will he come out with the same vengeance we've seen before? That's a question I think remains to be seen. Revere did practice every day this week, but he does have a big brace on that left knee, and he is a key for Georgia Southern. He's second in the Southern Conference in total offense. He's rushed for 11 touchdowns. He scored four of those in a game we had earlier this year on Fox Sports Net South at Appalachian. All right, well, the loss to East Tennessee State brought Georgia Southern out of the top spot, but this is still a huge game for both these teams. Furman with a victory can clinch at least a share of the Southern Conference Championship. Georgia Southern with a win, although they won't clinch a share of the title, suddenly they'll be controlling their own destiny, and both these teams pointing towards the Conference Championship and a high seed in the upcoming 1AA playoffs. Well, Dave, this game is for home field advantage. As we see here, Furman, they're the top dog. Last year's second place, Georgia Southern, they're also in the mix. I think when you look at the winner of this game they get an at-large bid, but the other team they're also trying to get there too but actually you get an automatic berth and the other team will get the at-large berth so now they're just trying to fight for whole field advantage and don't forget about Appalachian State they're four and two in the league with losses to only Furman and Georgia Southern they're five and three overall ranked 11th in the latest poll they're right in the playoff picture all right we talked about the standings we talked about the offensive stars but defensively these teams are lights out as well Georgia Southern and Furman one two in every big defensive statistical category scoring defense total defense, and Furman and Ethan, they haven't allowed a touchdown in the first quarter all year long. No, defensively, I like this team because they return 10 starters. They're playing against an option attack, which means you have to play responsibility football. Not any great individual players, a great team unit, and I think that's what they're going to have today, and really to try to stop Adrian Peterson, because if one guy tries to be the hero, someone will be beaten. And look at the way they were able to get to the passer when they defeated Appalachian State earlier this year in Greenville. Points allowed per game. The leader is Penn out of the Ivy League. But look at number four and number five, Georgia Southern and Furman. Both those teams giving up just over 11 points a game. A defensive battle. Both of these offenses come into this game scoring an awful lot of points. But defensively, these two teams don't give up a lot. So I expect a defensive battle. A battle indeed it should be between Furman and Georgia Southern. And just moments ago, Adrian Peterson in his familiar number three 
had that jersey number three retired. Lots of his old high school teammates on hand, and this is senior day. There's Paul Johnson, the head coach. Thanks, AP. Thanks, AP, for sure. And this will stay on display at Paulson Stadium. Bobby Johnson is the head football coach at Furman. This is his eighth year, graduated from Clemson in 1973 and has really done a terrific job. Furman consistently now one of the upper echelon teams in the Southern Conference. Lots of emotion running, history, running through this game. Series history, the Georgia Southern has won seven of the last meetings, and Ethan, last year's meeting did not go Georgia Southern's way. Yeah. Furman won that game 45 to 10. Lewis Ivory rushed for 301 rushing yards in that game. Get this, he produced more rushing yards in that game than Furman had produced in the previous three meetings against the Eagles combined. Well, you know what the Georgia Southern defense is thinking right now, especially Paul Johnson. He's saying to himself, we must stop Lewis Ivory and make someone else beat us. Paul Johnson, offensively, he's had an outstanding offense, great player in his fifth year. They are looking to try to win their fifth conference championship. Nobody has ever done that. Five championships in the Southern Conference a row hanging in the balance for Georgia Southern. He's been the national 1AA Coach of the Year four times in a row. Back-to-back -back national championships. Paul Johnson's just done a fabulous job here at Georgia Southern. Furman will kick off, and Georgia Southern will receive. Kickoff returners for Georgia Southern. There's a look at J.R. Revere. Kickoff coming for Furman, set to kick it off, Danny Marshall. And we are underway. Ford on the return, takes it across the 20 and up to the 23 yard line. So Georgia Southern will start first and 10 from their own 23. Here's a look at J.R. Revere coming out as the starting quarterback for the Eagles of Georgia Southern. Great runner, runs their option attack very, very well. Peterson is the lone setback on first down, number three in blue. And it's Revere on the keeper. He's got the corner, he's got the first down, he's got much more. Into the open, finally dragged down from behind, but not until he reaches the 42-yard line. And I guess that answers a lot of questions about his ability to run the football. Hey, it sure does answer my question. Last week, a big knee brace today. He doesn't have it on, and they just come out and run an option play. He keeps the football. Nobody on the corner, and this kid is back. You can see he has the speed, the vision, and this is what we saw against App State, and it seems like, Dave, he's a healthy quarterback. A Revere, 5'11", 184 pounds, a redshirt senior from LaGrange, Georgia. Again, it's Revere on the keeper. Breaks it inside and takes it down to the 35-yard line, so that's another good gain on first down. It'll be second down and about two yards to go. Offensively for Georgia Southern, Revere the quarterback, 11 rushing touchdowns, and he is behind a big, big offensive line. Backs and receivers, Peterson is the man. Derek Owens will not play today, so they're a little short in the wide receiver core. Charles Clark, really tough at the center, but he's banged up two. He's only practicing one day per week. Revere keeping again, and this time, Furman smells it out. Best defensive play so far in this game for Furman, and let's check that, that defense. 
up front, Spencer and Sperling are back after missing last week, uh, after missing games two weeks ago with injuries. The linebacking core, they make the majority of the tackles. Will Bouton in the middle is the reigning defensive player of the year in the Southern Conference. In the secondary, this is a good group. Jackson and Rodney Johnson on the corners. Robert Rougeau is our referee today and will measure for the first down. He has it. And so far this first drive, it's just been all J.R. Revere and Paul Johnson's trying to figure out you know, the health of his quarterback. I think he's answered those questions because nobody else has touched the football. AP's got to be thinking, hey, he retired my jersey. Give me the ball. Oh, he'll get his chances, trust oh, me. Plenty. <laughs> no question. <laughs> Furman was idle last week. They beat East Tennessee State two weeks ago. Georgia Southern lost to the Bucks in Johnson City last week. Long count by Revere. Revere will keep it, and he will be dragged down. Brandon Poole, sophomore from Columbia, South Carolina, did not buy the fake, stayed with the quarterback and brought him down. Well, they've come with this play on three consecutive plays, and Spoon, he stays home this time, and that's why Spoon was able to make the play because he didn't go with the dive back, Adrian Peterson. Outstanding play. Loss of three, at least second down and 13. Overflow crowd still working their way into Paulson Stadium. Revere with his first pass. And it's complete to the 20-yard line, and that is a first down. Eagles were able to get the football to Undra Robinson. Well, nice play by Revere because he's only attempted 50 passes, and this is just a strike between three defenders. Nice play by the offense. It's another Georgia Southern first down. Eagles on the march on their initial possession. They have reached the Furman 21. Finally, Peterson on the carry. And he will take it down near the 17-yard line. Good surge by the offensive line of the Georgia Southern Eagles off the right side for Adrian Peterson. What's happened also, J.R. Revere, he's loosened up the secondary. He's also loosened up everyone on defense, so that allows Adrian Peterson a chance to get up in secondary for some positive yards. Peterson this season, look at that, averaging nearly six yards a carry, 14 touchdowns. Got behind Reggie Cordy and Bubba Brantley on the right side for good yards, and here comes Peterson again. Peterson has the first down inside the 10-yard line. It'll be first and goal. Well, Dave, what we've seen so far during this first drive, as I said before, J.R. Revere has been working to the outside. Nobody has been paying attention to Adrian Peterson because he hasn't carried the football. Now, all of a sudden, they are getting the ball to Adrian Peterson. This is an offense that has scored 70% of the time in the red zone. And you got to like those chances, 29 touchdowns and six field goals. But last week, one touchdown and seven opportunities. Those seven opportunities inside the red zone produced only 16 points. Revere tries the left side and gets to the five. Well, if you look at this Furman defense so far, they've been caught off guard because I don't think they felt like J.R. Revere was that healthy looking at last week. Now all of a sudden, he's gassed him a few times on this drive. Adrian Peterson, he has gotten into the mix. And now, if you're Paul Johnson, you have this defense right where you want them because they're one-two punch, they're working. Mike Killian made a fine tackle that time for the Paladins. Revere, the pitch. Nowhere to go. Great play defensively by Josh Cooper, the pitch man. Walden just could not get around the corner. No, and that's why I go back to responsibilities when you look at this defense versus this offense. The free safety, Josh Cooper, he makes the play because he's responsible for this pitch. See, he's out there right now in the flat. He makes the play. It's one-on-one. -on -one. The defender, he won that battle. Third and goal now. Third and goal at the five-yard line. Adrian Peterson has just moved into second place on the all-time NCAA 1AA rushing list, passing Jerry Azuma of New Hampshire. But I'm sure he'd much rather have a touchdown on this drive. And 
Revere will call timeout. So Georgia Southern opts to burn the first of their three timeouts here in the first half. 9.49 to go. Georgia Southern trying to take the opening kickoff all the way down the field for a touchdown. Bobby Johnson's purple Paladins of Furman trying to stop them. No score early in Statesboro. Just ran the option all the way down the field, and it was a nice dive back inside to Adrian Peterson, but also Will Bouton. He was there to make the play, but he just couldn't make the tackle on Revere. So Georgia Southern looks great on their opening drive. Scott Shelton, three for four in the field goal department last week, connects on the extra point. J.R. Revere, 45 yards total on the drive. Well, just look, he comes down the line, two defenders over pursue, he just makes a great play, and it seems like the guy is, is running this offense because he's faking the ball to Adrian Peterson. Everybody's going with the fake. He comes down the line. Nobody's there. Oops, the uh -oh. scores for missed him. The Touchdown. Third. Defensively, you have to tackle well with these two outstanding players because they can run the ball after the first initial hit. As we see here, two guys missed him, but also we've seen earlier in the game that you better put a hat on number nine and number three because they will make you pay. Well, after losing to East Tennessee State last week, Ethan, that opening touchdown drive of Georgia Southern, does that give the Eagles their swagger back? I think so. I think you can look at this offense and say, J.R. Revere is the guy that makes it go. Adrian Peterson, he gets all the headlines, but number nine must make great decisions. On this first drive, he made all the right decisions because his team went right down the field with really no trouble from this piloting defense. Back to receive the kick, Brian Bratton. He's already returned two kicks for touchdowns this year. Took the opening kickoff back against Appalachian State, 100 yards, and he took one against VMI, 91 yards for a score. This one will come from the eighth. Takes it through the first way, but is brought down near the 23-yard line, and that's where Furman will begin their first drive of the day. Well, it's still a great field position. And I think now it's Lewis Ivory's turn to show why he's been an award winner to, to get his offense going. Quarterback for the Furman Paladins, Billy Napier, 6'2", 204, redshirt junior from Chatsworth, Georgia. Wrapping up his first year as a starter and really has done a great job after backing up Justin Hill, second in the Southern Conference in passing, fourth in total offense. Fake to Ivory on first down. Napier, the throw is incomplete and nearly intercepted. Drake Cooper broke up the pass that was intended for James Thomas. Let's take a look at the offensive lineup. Napier is your quarterback. Won't throw a lot, but he's been very effective. Only three interceptions all year. Backs and receivers. Lewis Ivory is the man. He's hurting a little bit, a sore collarbone. We'll check him out this afternoon. And offensively up front, Chris Stewart and Marty Priori, two of the best offensive linemen in 1AA football. Second and 10 from the eye. Pitch to Ivory. Ivory to the 29-yard line. James Young stepped in and made the tackle. Georgia Southern's defense giving up less than 12 points per game. Robert LeBlanc very tough at that defensive tackle spot. In the linebacking court, Joe Scott playing today with a broken wrist. He's in a cast. And in the defensive secondary, they are tough on the corners. Whitaker and Cooper, James Young, David Young, not related at the safety spots. Third down and five. Furman averaging about 23% conversions on third down. Short drop, Napier the throw, caught. He's got the first down. Flags are down as he reaches the 42-yard line. Aaron Whitaker, the stop for Georgia Southern. But Georgia Southern came with a blitz on that play. It was a great play by the offense. Billy Napier, as you say, Dave, he hasn't thrown the ball an awful lot, but in order to get Lewis Ivory on track, he must complete some passes. Big play on third down. It was third and five, and offensively, we'll see what the flag is here, but it was just a great play and a great call. We have no foul. 89, the white of tight end was covered up, did not go downfield. There's no foul. Well, 
the drive continues. And Paul Johnson, he's probably saying, now my team has gone down the field. I don't need to see this Furman team come back and answer this quickly because if we are able to stop them now, we can still keep the momentum. But if they come back down, the momentum swings back the other way. So Furman picks up the first down. They keep the drive moving. Here's Ivory spinning up to the 46 yard line. That's a gain of three. It'll be second down and seven. And you can see Ivory hits the hole hard. He does hit the hole very hard, but also when you look at this defense of Georgia Southern, they're committing eight and nine men to the line of scrimmage. I think they're saying, Lewis Ivory, you may get your yards, but they're going to be tough, hard earned yards because we are going to hit you. And that's what they're doing so far. Ivory trails only Adrian Peterson as the top rusher and total offense leader in the Southern Conference. He's a converted high school fullback, and he's rushed for more than 100 yards in 26 of his last 31 starts. Going to the fullback this time. Eric Emerson, a freshman from Newman, Georgia, near midfield, third down and around two. The Furman, they've come back with a nice drive themselves. They're spraying the ball around, which I think they'll have to, to get this offense on track. If they can continue to keep the balance and everyone that touches the ball can be productive offensively, you got to like their chances of putting some points on the board. Emerson scored a touchdown in Furman's game two weeks ago with East Tennessee State. Got some movement in the line. Well, Freddis, Picada, he kind of jumped off size number 44, Spicata, but I'm not sure because also across the line of scrimmage, Marty Priori also moves, so it's just a matter of which guy jumped first. Because I thought Freddy Spicata moved first, but did he go into the neutral zone? Is a question here. Paladins think he did. He did. And that's a first down. Offside. On the defense. Five yard foul. Results in a first down. He's on the right side, number 44. He does move. And he initiates a little contact, but also he draws a guard offsides. First down for Furman at the Georgia Southern 45. Fake the ball to Ivory. Going for the post, incomplete. Number seven, Bear Reinhardt's trying to get open against Drew Cooper. Also, Bear Reinhardt, his nickname, his real name is really William, but his nickname is Bear for the legendary coach, Bear Bryant. But also, you look at the keys of this game. I think Furman, they are coming and playing the type of game plan they need to win this game. They need to get up early. Right now, they're behind because Georgia Southern, they don't really throw the ball, and they don't really throw it a lot. Strong special teams, they block five punts, but also they return kicks for touchdowns. Georgia Southern, we've seen Revere. He's already off, and Napier, they're coming back trying to throw the football, trying to make him beat them. Napier from the gun for the first time this afternoon on second and 10. Handoff to Ivory, trying to bounce out right. Crosses the 40 and is near the 38-yard line. And once again for Georgia Southern, it's Aaron Whitaker coming up to make the stop. What I also like about this offense is they, they're showing play action. Because everybody in the stadium knows number 34 is going to touch the ball. I mean, they're not kidding anybody here. But what you want to do is use him as a decoy also. As you stated, Davis, about third and five. And so far, they've been very productive on third down. Let's see if they'll come back and throw it again. Furman coach is very concerned about Ivory. Very sore collarbone. Deep handoff to Ivory, and he will not get to the marker. Michael Ward, the junior from Savannah, came up and made the stop short of the first down. But also, number 44, Freddie Spicata, was also in the backfield. I mean, he penetrated the line of scrimmage and really caused a pile. And he gave his linebackers a chance to get up in there. Great play by the defender. Well, on fourth down and a long two from the Georgia Southern 37-yard line, Lee Willis is into the game to punt the football. Georgia Southern has no safety back. Willis trying to hang the ball inside the 20-yard line. 
And he does a great job as the ball is down at the six yard line. Whetstone stopped it and a great punt by Willis. 5.19 to go, first period. Georgia Southern's got the ball and the lead, 7 0. Georgia Southern has the football and they have a 7 0 lead. The first time these two teams met was back in 1989 in the Division I-AA National Championship game. Irk Russell saw his team rally from a 22-point third-quarter deficit. Herman Barrow, a 12-yard touchdown catch. And here is the catch. Frank Johnson, a 13-yard grab. Tracy Ham finished the game passing for 419 yards and four touchdowns. Georgia Southern won their first national championship 44-42. And the man who would be leading Georgia Southern to back-to-back -to -back national titles, Adrian Peterson, takes the football out beyond the 20-yard line for a first down. Just an explosive run. But he hits up inside, he breaks tackles, but not only that, he accelerates upon the initial hit. And that's why this kid is good, because you got to knock him off of his feet. If you don't do that, he's going for extra yards. Got 4-5 speed, has a vertical leap of 34 inches. Adrian Peterson, just a great all-around football player. Peterson again. Carrying tacklers near the first down marker. What's happened is that J Adrian Peterson can thank J.R. Revere. And I really mean that because he has opened up everything on the outside. Now everyone has forgotten about Adrian Peterson. The offensive line surge is outstanding. And he's now running through holes that weren't there before. But those holes are being there now because of the running in the first drive by who else? J.R. Revere. He's got more NCAA records than some backs have yards. On that carry, got behind James McCoy and Josh Jones. It's first and ten. Revere, the keeper, across the 35 and up to the 39. I mean, what we're seeing with this op option offense is that they're hitting him on the outside with the first drive. Second drive, they're coming back, hitting him on the inside. Now they're coming back with what worked in the first job because now Adrian Peterson is now starting to draw attention. You pay attention to Adrian Peterson, now you come back with J.R. Revere. It's a great one-two punch. It certainly is. T.J. Anderson into the lineup. Andre Robinson also check in. And they split out wide. Georgia Southern will go with three wide receivers and a wing on second down and a long three. Revere avoids one tackler and is able to luckily get back to the line of scrimmage. A gain of anything of maybe a half a yard. Well, Will Bowden stayed home that time. And that's why you have to say, when you look at this offensive firm, 10 returning defensive players. Option football, responsibility football. So far during this first half, they haven't taken care of their responsibilities, and that's why Georgia Southern, have, that's why they've driven the ball down the field. And now they're starting another drive, and here's a big play in this drive, it's third and three. Bowden making his 43rd straight start today, a two-year captain, a four-year starter at middle linebacker for Furman. Third and three. Revere, the late pitch, flag comes in. Up to the 46-yard line goes Anderson, but we'll have to check out the flag. I think it's going to be holding on the offensive line. But now Paul Johnson, he's forcing the secondary to come up and make plays. Because the down linemen, they're responsible for Adrian Peterson. The linebackers are responsible for J.R. Revere. And now the secondary guys are responsible for the pitchbacks. And this Furman defense, they've seen option football before. East Tennessee State, Elon. But also, Bobby Johnson stated, the head coach of Furman said, Georgia Southern, they like to tweak their offense, and that's what tweaks their different. by the offensive line. 10-yard foul from the spot of the flag. Repeat third down. Ethan, you called it. Hey, I'm all over it. <laughs> hey, big game. It's a big game. You got to be on top of your game. But the holding is going to be on the, I think, number 74, Charles Clark, his offense. So now you put this offense that likes to run the football into a throwing situation on third and 12. And Revere will call his second timeout of the first quarter. Georgia Southern now with only one timeout remaining for the remainder of the first half. 
Paul Johnson not happy, but his Georgia Southern Eagles lead Furman 7 0. 2.31 to go, first period. Georgia Southern leads Furman 7-0 late in the first quarter. Television's most unique brand of football commentary airs Sunday with NFL This Morning on Fox Sports Net. This season, football funny man Jay Moore and the rest of the NFL This Morning crew welcome Boomer Esiason to the show that critics call the most unique, groundbreaking, off-the-wall 90 minutes of football news. NFL This Morning, it's a pregame show that's not really a pregame show. Tomorrow at 10.30 a.m. Eastern, right here on Fox Sports Net. Third down and 12 for J.R. Revere and the Georgia Southern Eagles. The handoff goes to Peterson, and Peterson will take it up to the 35-yard line, but he will be well short of the first down marker, and Georgia Southern will have to punt the ball. I don't really think they were going to pass the ball anyway. I mean, they've thrown one pa passing is not their forte. They like to run the option, get their backs, get Adrian Peterson, get anyone out there in the corner and let them make plays with their legs. And so you look at that situation now, they just want to play field position football. Scott Shelton had a career best 61 yard punt against East Tennessee State last week. He's got to worry about a Furman group that's blocked six punts this year. Bear Reinhardt will call for a fair catch at the 26-yard line. That's where Furman will take over first and 10. Top 10 in the NCAA 1AA poll from the Sports Network this week. Montana moves into the top spot as Georgia Southern falls back to number four, followed by Furman, Grambling, the Eagles of Georgia Southern, Hofstra in the top five, Eastern Illinois, they've already played this week, Western Kentucky, Lehigh, Rhode Island, and Youngstown State. That's your top 10. Eastern Illinois was a winner by 40 on Thursday night against UT Martin in the Ohio Valley Conference. Napier with the fake to Ivory. Pass across the middle is caught. Up to midfield. Trent Sansbury, the senior tight end from Lilburn, Georgia. Well, you know when tight ends make catches, I love that. I mean, this kid is a two-time consensus all-Southern Conference tight end, but also a three-year starter. But what I like about him is he has averaged over 19 yards per catch. He gets down the field, he makes the play, breaks tackles. That's what you like to see, the rack run after the catch. Of course you like to see tight ends catch That's the right. ball as a former NFL tight end himself. <laughs> Here's a pitch back to Ivory. Looked like the play was designed to go sweeping right. He cut it back inside and found some yards, and that's what a good running back does. He did find some yards. He made a nice dipsy do move to get back up the field. But what I like about this offense, they're throwing the ball on first down. They're trying to keep the Georgia Southern defense off guard. And they, they're doing that because they're spreading the ball around to everyone. It's just in a different way. We've seen the options being spread around with the football. Offensively, they're trying to do the same thing. Ivory, 26 carries for 146 yards and a touchdown last time out against East Tennessee State as Furman celebrated homecoming with a 31-6 win. This is Ivory again. And this time, the Georgia Southern line is waiting for him. Didn't fool anybody on that misdirection play because Michael Ward, number 47, he was right there. He stayed at home. Ward, a redshirt junior from Savannah. Coach calls him a throwback. He's one of those guys that's used to playing hurt. Last year he had to deal with a broken hand and a dislocated shoulder. So for the second time in as many opportunities to have the football, Furman is in Georgia Southern Territory. Third and five. Napier. Swings it out to Ivory. Got one good block, but was brought down at the 42-yard line. Well, he's short. And Michael Youngblood, number 41, he came over and made the play, and I don't think he made it. I mean, it appeared at first that he had a lot of green grass in front of him, but they quickly closed that. 
And we have come to the end of the first quarter. Georgia Southern leads 7-0. J.R. Revere, a five-yard touchdown run for the Eagles. Georgia Southern and Furman getting after it. Big game. Guarantee. Set to begin the second quarter, Georgia Southern with a 7-0 lead. J.R. Revere, 45 of those 53 rushing yards that led to a touchdown for Georgia Southern came on the opening drive. Lewis Ivory, 21 rushing yards thus far. Fourth down in the yard. Lee Willis on the punt. Short kick off the side of his foot. Take a pallet and bounce but will not go inside the 20-yard line. They'll go out of bounds at around the 22. That wasn't a very good kick. I mean, when you look at this offense, you like you would like to pin them inside the 10 on the 5, definitely inside the 20 to give them 80 yards to go, but I guess the ball just went off the wrong side of his foot, Dave. Willis with only a 20-yard punt, no return that time. He's averaging only 34.1 yards per punt this year. So Furman... Two opportunities to have the football. They drive into Georgia Southern territory on both occasions, but the Eagles' defense stiffens, and the Paladins are still off the scoreboard. This is Georgia Southern's third drive of the game. The pitch outside, across the 30 and up to the 31-yard line for the Eagles. Mark Myers, Jr. from Powder Springs, Georgia, his first opportunity to carry the football. But also number two, Josh Cooper. Just a nice little pitch to the left side. Great blocking. Myers gets up the field, and here comes the safety. <laughs> Taking him out of bounds. He sure did. <laughs> Myers, fastest player on the Eagles. He's got 4-3 speed. Averaging nearly 10 yards every time he rushes the football. Gain of eight. Peterson. He has the first down as he cracks across the 35. That was a nice safe play though. I mean, hit, the middle has been open. So he's going to get three and four. Or maybe more if he breaks a few tackles, but a nice safe call. Another Eagle sports action this afternoon. Georgia Southern continues to rotate their plays in with their wide receivers. Playing today without Derek Owens. Owens, a sore knee, hurt in the Citadel game, and he aggravated last week at East Tennessee State. He will not play today. And Revere thrown down in the backfield. Ryan Spencer, the nose guard, the senior from Clover, South Carolina, quickly into the backfield and brought down J.R. Revere. Well, he's been on vacation. Yeah, I mean, rested. <laughs> they've had two weeks off. He gets into the backfield. Just another option player, and Ryan Spencer, here's a guy who was consistent all-conference player as well. So you know this kid knows how to play, but he should be well-rested. Had a week off after injuring that ankle. He returned to practice last Monday. There was no swelling on that injured ankle, and he looks, he's in top shape. Just ask Revere. Revere on the rollout. Flag is down, and Revere lets it go. And a penalty flag is down. Intentional grounding may be the call. Yes, also, and I think that the initial penalty is on Georgia Southern as well. But that was definitely grounded because there was no receiver over there in sight. Nice pressure by the Furman defense. Plenty of penalty flags on the field. Here's the call. We have multiple fouls. We have an illegal formation against the offense, and we have an intentional grounding against the offense. Now, Revere is going just, he sprints out to his right. He looks left. They had a receiver in the middle of the field wide open. As we see, number 80 flashes here, but he couldn't get the ball to him. He flips the ball out of bounds. Paul Johnson, the head coach at Georgia Southern, is trying to contend to the referee that Revere was outside the box when he threw the ball away. 
Nevertheless, it's a penalty against the Eagles, and it's third and long, third down and 22. But outside the box, that would mean he's outside the tackle area, which should have been an incomplete pass. Been, should have been. Three wide receivers this time for Georgia Southern on third and long. And Revere will keep it and just nowhere to run. Will Bouton right there again dropped him, and Georgia Southern will have to punt the football. And the Furman defense yeah. looking a lot better than they did on that opening drive. Well, well, Ryan Spencer, number 78, he was also in the backfield and in on that play. And I'm going to say that was his drive because he made two huge plays by sacking or really for a loss. Revere and also causing some havoc in the backfield in that particular series. Scott Shelton into punt. Bear Reinhardt is back to receive the punt. Short kick. You hit him. It's live ball. That's a live ball. So Chris Brown, he just didn't see the bottom of 35, but definitely hit a Furman player. A potentially dangerous play, but Furman has the ball at the 38-yard line early in the second period. Georgia Southern, a 7-0 lead. Early in the second quarter, Furman's got the football, but they trail Georgia Southern 7-0. 1988, the Division 1AA National Championship game. Furman head coach Jimmy Satterfield roaming the sidelines for Georgia Southern. Kirk Russell. Georgia Southern takes an early lead in this national title tilt. 3-0. But back storms Furman. Frankie DeBusk, one of the best ever for the Purple Paladins. 19-yard pass to Greg Key. DeBusk, 7 of 11, 124 yards on the game. Dwight Sterling, 5-yard touchdown run, made it 17-0. Georgia Southern's last chance, but Furman All-American linebacker Jeff Blankenship, his second interception of the game. Furman wins the national championship back in 1988, 17-12 over Georgia Southern. Were games played before Georgia Southern joined the yeah. Southern Conference. Lots of great history between these two terrific teams. Furman with a football first and 10 at their own 36 yard line, trailing 7 0. Ivory powers his way across the 40, and he should get forward progress up near the 43. This kid runs low to the ground. I mean, he's 5 foot 9, 200 pounds, and he gets behind his pads. and. The same things are going to happen for him sooner or later. He's going to pop through this hole, and he's going to make everybody miss him and break some tackles and continue to run. But I like the determination in, because he's running very hard right now. Ivory passed Carl Tremble as Furman's all-time leading rusher two games ago against the Citadel. Napier with the pitch to Ivory. And he is brought down after he reaches the 45-yard line. Robert LeBlanc, senior from Hinesville, Georgia, made the stop. Well, that was his great pursuit by LeBlanc. I mean, down the line, a little option play for Furman. And I don't think the quarterback wanted to keep the ball because he pissed it very quickly. A nice play by the defense. LeBlanc has been bothered all year long by a foot problem. And then, last week, he was burdened by a toe injury. But he's in there. Everybody's strapping it up for this one. Third down and two. Ivory. Very close to the first down. I think he may have gotten about the nose of the ball in his second effort. If he reached the 47, he's got it. I think he has it. I mean, he's running behind a, a veteran group up front. I mean, three linemen, they were all conference players. And that was the first time since 1990, 2000. So these guys have been around for a while. And also, if you look at 1981, that's the last time that has happened. But when you look at this line, Dave, they had one loss in 1999, one loss last year in terms of the five guys working together. So they haven't really had to go out and replace guys. So that's why Lewis Ivory has been so successful because of the guys up front. They had a great rarity last year where they had three members of their offensive line earn first-team all-conference honors. Napier, short drop, Reinhardt's got it. And he takes it to the Georgia Southern 44-yard line. Napier, three-step drop, got that football out of there quick. But Napier's done a good job so far. Uh, he's done exactly what they wanted him to do offensively, keep the pressure off of Lewis Ivory by completing passes. And he just takes a nice little boot fake, three-step, 
and the ball is gone. The receiver wide open. Bear Reinhardt. Offensively, they have a nice game plan going. They've just been stopped short a few times on third down. Reinhardt cut a 37-yard touchdown pass from Justin Hill in last year's big win over Georgia Southern. Napier again. The pass knocked away, intended for Reinhardt. And for the Eagles, the defensive play was made by Dreek Cooper. Well, that pass was on the quarterback. The ball was thrown behind Reinhardt. He was wide open. He had Dreek Cooper beaten to the corner. But because of the bad pass of the ball was thrown behind receiver, that gave Cooper a chance to make a break on the ball. So he sets up. Watch where the pass is. Boom, it's behind him. If that ball is placed out front, he has a nice completion for a good game. If not a touchdown because Dreek Cooper was behind him. Well, Reinhardt's finding some open spots. Napier today, his numbers. Second and ten. Ivory will take it down near the 36. So Furman has been able to move the ball now into Georgia Southern territory for their third consecutive possession, but still no points. Well, it's hurt them. It's pretty much the bad plays at the wrong time. The pass play we just saw to Reinhardt, wide open, pass not completed. Now they have to come back and make some plays happen, make some things happen. But defensively, you have to say that Georgia Southern, they've done their job 35 yards on the ground. That's not a Lewis Ivory type of day. Rushing yards tough to come by for Furman thus far, only 35 on the game as opposed to 111 for Georgia Southern. Third and seven from the gun. Napier hangs in, delivers the ball to Reinhardt. That will be ruled a catch. He'll take it down to the 34. Still four yards shy of a first down. Well, we saw a punt the last time Furman was down here, and the punt didn't go very far, so I look for them to go for it. Because defensively, they have, really haven't played that bad. I realize they've given up a big drive in the first drive, but defensively, go back to the last stand. Now they're starting to figure out this offense of Georgia Southern. Ethan, you are one with the Furman Brain Trust. You're right on it. The, that is exactly what they're going to do. Well, they need some momentum. I mean, it's fourth and four. And I look for them to come out and throw the ball here because everybody will be keen on Lewis Ivory. Their flashy freshman, Isaac West, is split out wide and now a timeout. Furman will call the timeout to talk over the situation. 9.01 to go in the first half. Furman on the march, but Georgia Southern has the lead, 7-0. Georgia Southern, 7, Furman, nothing. It's the new show everybody's talking about, the best damn sports show, period. It's the nightly show that features a comedian who's a diehard sports fan and a bunch of ex-jocks who really know the game. Critics are calling it a collision of sports and comedy and just what we've been waiting for. Introducing the best damn sports show, period. Weeknights at 7.30 p.m. and 11.30 p.m. only on Fox Sports Net. Fourth down and four for Furman at the Georgia Southern 34-yard line. Napier from the gun, the throw behind West, who is wide open. If the pass had been on the money, it would have been a Furman touchdown. Instead, Georgia Southern takes over on downs. Well, he beat number 26, Aaron Whitaker. See, these are the type of plays that are killing this offense. We saw earlier Reinhardt, and now he comes back and he misses West. Although he was under a lot of heat, Georgia Southern came with the blitz, right read, just not a good pass. Isaac West, a redshirt freshman from Augusta, Georgia, caught two touchdown passes for Furman for their win over Appalachian State in Greenville, but that time the ball was behind him. J.R. Revere leads Georgia Southern's offense back out onto the field. Peterson fighting for yards and just nowhere to go. For Furman, Ryan Spencer led the charge to bring down AP. Well, he's starting to assert himself. I mean, he's a big guy, 6'2", 265, and he's penetrating the backfield, which is causing problems not only for Adrian Peterson, but also for J.R. Revere because he must read the down lineman. I mean, that's his first read, and if the linemen are in the backfield, or if they're in the process of getting into the backfield, he's got to make his reads very quickly. Ryan Spencer, so far, he's winning the battle in the chess match. Peterson was able to fall forward for a two-yard game and gain, and now Spencer fires across the line. But was he drawn off? No, I think J.R. Revere just changed the snap count. I mean, he needs to slow this big guy down. And the best way to, to do that is 
Change your snap count. Now you have him back on his heels and you keep him guessing. Offsides against the defense. Five yard foul. Repeat taking it down. I mean, let's watch Revere's head as he comes up to the line of scrimmage. He's going to give a hard count. He's going to go down and bob. And you can see he's he's really into his cadence. And as he said his second number, he looked at 78 and 78 jump. Cost Bobby Johnson and Furman five yards. They are the least penalized team in the Southern Conference. Only 36 penalty yards a game. Revere, play action fake. Lots of time to pass, incomplete. Carl Kearney was his intended receiver, a sophomore from Griffin, Georgia. He was open, but the ball was behind him. Cedric Ritter had the coverage from his linebacking spot. It's a nice play by the defender because the pass would have been completed. As you mentioned, Ritter, he falls back into coverage, and he makes the play and knocks the ball down, and that's what he's supposed to do if he's out there in space. Pitch out of bounds at the 44-yard line and very, very close to a first down. I think Mark Myers made the first down, but also Josh Cooper, number two, comes from the safety spot and makes the tackle. It's the same play, and really the same play by the defender as well that they had run before. So they're making that free safety come out of the middle of the field and make plays. Myers taking advantage of that great speed. We're in Statesboro, Georgia, Paulson Stadium for the game of the year, arguably, in 1AA football and in the Southern Conference. Second-ranked Furman, number four, Georgia Southern, 7.54 to go in the first half. Dave Weekly happy to be alongside Ethan Horton today. Up to the 49-yard line. Revere on on the, the keeper goes J.R. Revere. And John Thrift, number nine. He's in on the play. I think we're seeing now defensively they have settled down. You don't see Revere getting to the outside as much. You don't see the holes opening opening up on the inside as much because now they're starting to play their keys and their responsibilities. And now defensively they are being in the right places at the right time. Now they just may have to make the tackle. Revere, the keeper. And the white clad purple paladins just swarmed to the football and dropped Revere for a loss. So I think on that first drive, they were over anxious defensively. And now what we've seen so far, the last possession that Georgia Southern had the football on now early in this possession, they are staying at home and not really tackling the defender. They're watching the football, opposed to just flying around like a chicken with his head cut off, just trying to, you know, really hit anything that's moving. And that's why they're able to see what's going on because they're waiting, opposed to reacting to everything they see at first. That's a great description. Richie Jackson came up and made the stop for Furman. He's one of the Cincinnati connection for the Paladins. Revere, chase from the pocket, eludes one tackler, stays on his feet, and he is knocked out of bounds at midfield. Well, now, also, I better give credit to Brandon Poole for making that stop. But now Revere doesn't have time to get back, sit back, read the defense, and rush. We see Bowden come in. He comes in, number 20. Revere's under pressure, so now he's running for his life. And defensively, they are now starting to get the pressure, something we talked about earlier in the open. Put pressure on Revere and make him throw the football opposed to sitting back there and just waiting for the defense to come to him. So Shelton will punt the football, and Reinhardt is back at the Furman 15 to receive. Starting to bog down into a defensive struggle, Ethan. Well, they don't give a lot of points on either side of the ball, so that's what I anticipated early on. Into the end zone, a touchback. 50-yard punt, no return. 6.21 to go in the first half, a sold-out Paulson Stadium. Georgia Southern leads Furman 7-0. Lewis Ivory, he's the man when you're talking about Furman's offense. Furman trailing Georgia Southern 7-0, getting late in the second period. And last year, when these teams met in Greenville, Lewis Ivory ran wild. A 73-yard touchdown run, a 37-yard touchdown run. Ivory ran for a career-high 301 yards 
set school and conference single game rushing records. Furman rolled up 523 yards of total offense and winning 45 to 10. Lewis Ivory, Furman's all-time leading rusher and the Walter Payton Award winner. The Payton Award goes to the most outstanding player in NCAA 1AA college football. First and 10 for the Paladins from their own 20. Napier on play action. He's got his tight end for a 20-yard gain out at the 40-yard line. Once again, Trent, Trent Sansbury. Sansbury. Well, Sansbury just runs a deep Run out of bounds crossing by route. Receiver to the Davis right runs Young. a deep post, clears out everything, and Napier Davis just sits back there yard. and he completes the passes. Now First all he needs to do is hit the big passes when they're there, and this offense will not bog down. Sansbury, in his third year as a starter, this computer science major has a 3.29 GPA. And those are his numbers on the football field this year. Deep handoff to Ivory. Couldn't get away. Nice play from by Cooper. Four. Cooper, he tried to give him the leg and take it away, but Cooper stayed at home and he made the stop. Anytime you can get out there in a one-on-one -on -one battle in open field, you have to make the stop because Dreek Cooper was the only player over there to make the play. If he misses the tackle, we're probably still watching Ivory go into the end zone. Yeah, that's a touchdown saving tackle. Big play. Nevertheless, it's a gain of three for Lewis Ivory. Second and seven at the 44. Furman with the football trailing 7 nothing. Georgia Southern scored on the game's first possession. All kinds of time for Napier. Threw it behind his tight end, but he made a great catch. He's got a first down at the 45. Great play by Sansbury. Nice hands, nice soft hands, but also he worked to get open. Coming off the line of scrimmage, he sat right there between the linebackers. The linebackers had him covered up. Watch 56, here comes 89. He moves to his right. He's going to move to his left. He gets open to pass the throw behind him. Great play and great concentration. Tight ends, what can I say? We just make plays. <laughs> hey, you certainly do. you got to appreciate a great catch like that. Nice catch. First and 10. Furman again in Georgia Southern Territory at the 45. Napier. All kinds of time. The ball is incomplete. It was intended for the freshman West, but he quit running at the 15-yard line. He stopped on the route because he thought he was going to get the ball. Napier was just trying to let him clear the defender. I mean, Aaron Whitaker was standing in the middle of the field. He was beaten. Napier was looking from left to right, trying to give the receiver a chance to get across the hash. Therefore, the receiver must have thought, I'm not going to get the ball, and he stopped. Got to keep running. You got to keep running and stay alive. I mean, we just saw a tight end stay alive. He was covered, he uncovered, he got the ball because he continued to work to try to get a reception. Furman's got a lot of speed on the outside. Brian Bratton is right to the left and West is to the right. And we've got movement in the trenches. Well, which guy do you take? Victor Cabrell, number 90? <laughs> Freddy's a skater 44. Defensively, both guys jumped. And I think they were in the neutral zone, so it's against the defense. I mean, Napier must be doing a good job with the cadence because he's has gotten those guys off sides. On the defense, five-yard foul, repeat second down. And what he's doing, he's just slowing down the pass rush. Now those guys up front just can't tee off on the, the, the linemen and really get into the backfield because they must make sure that they're on sides first. Paul Johnson, head coach at Georgia Southern. His Eagles are in a game here at home. Inside of five minutes to go, first half, Georgia Southern with a 7-0 lead, but Furman on the move, second and five. Pitch back to Ivory. Winston Hardison, a junior from Palm Bay, Florida, led the charge for the Eagles' defense as they contain Ivory. It's scary, though, Ethan, when you have two great backs like Peterson and Ivory. You make good defensive plays, but you're just one play closer to that big play. You know those guys are capable of making. Well, it's one thing for sure. Neither guy can hide. Yeah. I mean, definitely not Ivory. He's seven yards deep in the backfield, so everyone can see 34. You just watch him key on him and make the play. Big third down for Furman. Third and four at the 39. Backs are split this time. Georgia Southern fakes the blitz. Napier across the middle. Pass is caught. And it's the tight end again, and it's a first down. And right now, Trent Sansbury is Napier's favorite target. 333 flat, third and three to four, you hit the tight end. 
you got to see how this kid is working because he's just going up the field. He's on the right, left side of the screen. He breaks out, and ball's there. That's the type of play that you have in short yardage situations. He is successful because he can catch the football, and he's given himself a chance by getting up the field. Furman's had problems with their third down conversions in Georgia Southern Territory. There, they pick up a big first down. Napier, the play action, and it's the tight end again, but this time, Sansbury couldn't hold it. Not only that, the ball was thrown behind him once again. Also, David Young, number 18, was beaten on the play, although he did come in and get in on it. Napier has got to learn, and maybe he'll learn by the second half, put the ball in front of the receiver, let them run to it, and make a play. Because Sansbury was wide open in the flat. I mean, all his throws that have been terrible, they have been thrown, the passes have been thrown behind the receiver. So you can't ask a tight end to come around and, and make a catch and really try to get up the field. You give a defender a chance to gain ground on you. He almost made that catch. He did. Second and ten. The swing pass to West. Makes one move. And it looks like he has a first down at the 22-yard line. I think he has it. A nice run by West. Getting behind the blockers, a nice little slip screen. He read his blocking, and he got up the field. From the passes I've seen from Napier, he doesn't have a problem with the short passes. It's the deeper passes that he's got to put a little touch on the ball that he's, he's had a little trouble with. And maybe he's just not throwing the football. He's reading something that I can't see up here. But the shorter passes, he's right on the mark. Here's the measurement for the first down, and Furman does have it by the length of the ball. I mean, on his short passes, he just drops back and delivers the football nice and quick in front of the receiver, and he's up the field for a nice gain in the first down. That's what's keeping his drive alive are those type of plays. Bobby Johnson watching Furman trying to drive for the tying touchdowns, first downs. Now Furman with a, an edge, 9-8. Emerson, the fullback, gets a good surge up to the 18-yard line. But Emerson is sort of their surprise, surprise, because you know you're going to see Lewis Ivory. Offensively, they're getting the ball to their tight end, the wide receivers. They're trying to give everyone a chance and to keep the defense guessing to, okay, we've defended this guy, we've defended that guy. Now, well, now what can you come with? And so far, offensively, if they can continue to push this ball, there's plenty of time before the half. They're looking at scoring some points. How big would it be for Furman if they could get a tying touchdown here before halftime? Second and five. Napier, the throw, caught by Ivory, can't get away. Solid tackle made by the free safety, James Young. But also, it was a good shot by Napier of just getting the ball off because he was under heavy pressure. He could have taken the sack, but he got the ball out there to Lewis Ivory to try to make a play. And you can see up the middle, it's just a nice little dive play. He sneaks out. He's under the gun. Nice job of getting it out. Furman, the drive has reached the Georgia Southern 14-yard line. Third down and two. Furman now up to 50% on their third down conversions. Emerson tried to go to short route with the fullback. He may have got it, and it will be very close. I think he did. There wasn't a lot of room in there. There's Ward who made the stop, Michael Ward. And this is a nice drive by Furman. Because they've thrown the ball, they've rushed the ball. They've hit everyone on the field. Unlike the last possessions they've had. I mean, they've had a lot of miscues. But on this particular drive, they've made the plays they've had to. Anytime you come into a hostile environment, which they're in today, you got to make it happen when you have opportunities because you don't know how many opportunities you're going to have. And so far, they've had a few big plays, and they haven't converted. Down, Missed it by that much. It's fourth down. Coming up at the half. I would go for it. Adrian Peterson, the retirement ceremony of his familiar number three. More on AP. We'll get to Atlanta for a Southern Sports Report. And, of course, we'll have all the first half highlights and statistics.
No question, Furman going for it on fourth and less than a yard. Napier, the keeper. He got it. I mean, it took it to the 12, and that's a first down. Well, the big fellas up front pushed the pile. I mean, this is a nice momentum drive before the half and also for confidence, but the surge here, I mean, he could have fallen on his knees and crawled, although he would have been down. <laughs> but when you look at the surge, I mean, it was a nice line surge by the guys up front. I mean, if they put this ball in the end zone here, it breeds a lot of confidence for this offense and really for this defense because they played well thus far. Under a minute to play now in the first half. Fake to Ivory. And the pass to the tight end. Sansbury is incomplete at second and ten. Well, that's the pass play he was open before, and the pass was thrown behind him as David Young, number 18. He was there a little sooner with the coverage because he had seen the play before. But I like the call. Down in this part of the field, you got to work that tight end because it's a short field. The receivers can only run crossing routes to try to confuse the linebackers or everyone else, but you like the chances of those guys catching the ball, the tight ends, that is, because it's a short field to work with. 51 seconds remaining in the first half. Clock stopped on the incomplete pass. Keep your eye on number 89, Sansbury, working on linebackers. Here he's working on 41, Michael Youngblood. Nate, you're out of the gun. The protection is good. It finally breaks down, and he goes down back at the 24-yard line. A huge defensive play. Well, it's a flag down. I think it's against the defense because they came with the blitz, and I think it's holding on the defense. It's either holding or a legal procedure, but I think it goes against the defense, but I'm not sure because they brought the house, and he was looking for his tight end, number 89, but he falls down. He doesn't get up. He's under pressure, and he takes a sack. Young blood. Led the charge for the sack. Well, offensively, they're looking as if it's against them. And it is against them. Illegal shift. Ten moving against the offense. The foul is refused. Third down. It's a big penalty. Huge penalty against Furman. Che check that. The penalty was refused and Georgia Southern will take the play. And now Furman has called a timeout with 43 seconds remaining in the first half. This has been Furman's best drive by far of the game. 14 plays, 68 yards. It started at the 20-yard line and now has eaten up more than five and a half minutes. Well, they've converted some third downs, fourth down here just recently. But this was a big penalty because it's for a loss of down. And you would like to see seven points on the board if you're pulling for the Paladins because now it's 7-7 seven, seven, a tie game. I mean, you don't want to kick field goals down here. You like to get seven points. And I think offensively that's why they're talking about it. And it's third 21, so there's not a lot of players for third and 21, but defensively, don't let anybody get behind you. Tonight it's a doubleheader on College Football Saturday presented by Kyocera. First Heisman hopeful Eric Crouch and the second-ranked Nebraska Cornhuskers look to stay undefeated when they take on Kansas in a Big 12 showdown. Then Arizona State looks to upset eighth-ranked Oregon and Heisman hopeful Joey Harrington. It all begins at 7 p.m. Eastern right here on Fox Sports Net. Ethan, the tight end, Stansbury, three catches for 39 yards on this drive. He's been Napier's top target. Well, Napier was looking for him on that last play, and he got tangled up with number 18, David Young, and after that was a jailbreak offensively, and we saw a sack in the process. Three wide receivers, Napier out of the gun. Ivory is there, and he gets the football, and he blasts inside the 10. Five, touchdown, Furman! You talk about catching someone off guard. And I said earlier, this kid is running hard. Sooner or later, something is going to open up. He breaks a few tackles. A nice inside draw play. Everyone thought third and 21, you take a pass with, at the time, 42 seconds left to try to get the ball into the end zone because they were already in field goal range. Ivory, what a play, what a call. Gutsy call, I might add, because if he doesn't get in, have a player down here, Youngblood. Michael Youngblood's down on the play, but watch the blocking. Great blocking, big hole, nice vision. Makes two guys miss up the field. That's why this kid 
is one of the best players in one AA football, the Walter Payton Award winner. I mean, he could have gone down right there on the slightest of contact, but he wanted to get into the end zone. Now, you know, we're looking at it, a possible tie game. You can only hold down good backs for so long, Dave. Big-time players make big-time plays, and Ivory with a 23-yard touchdown run, 37 seconds to go, and that gives Furman a huge lift as they get ready to head back to the locker room at intermission. It does. Youngblood remains down on the field for Georgia Southern. Well, coming, he came across the middle of the field to try to make the play. I mean, he didn't appear to hit anyone because he was trying to tackle Ivory, and he bounced off unless he hit his own player because two guys tried to make the stop, and neither one could do that. I mean, I think he's getting ready to get up. Maybe he's just a little tired. Walking off under his own power. I mean, that was a long drive. So I think the young blood here, he's just trying to catch a breather before the half. Young blood heads off the field, and now the extra point attempt that will tie the game for Furman. Danny Marshall, sophomore from Atlanta's Marist High School. Shoots it on through, and the game is tied. Bobby Johnson's Furman Paladins tie the game with a 23-yard touchdown run by star Lewis Ivory with 37 seconds to go here before halftime. Well, I'm sure he's happy to get points before the half because it probably reads confidence for his defense. The first half, really the first drive, right down the field by the Georgia Southern offense. The last few possessions they've had defensively, Furman, I think they've kind of figured out what's going on because Revere hasn't gotten to the outside. They've been forced to do something that's really uncharacteristic of this offense, which is throw the football. He's not a passer. He's a runner. You see 15 plays, 80 yards. I mean, they really kept the ball this entire second half once they got it deep in their own territory. Furman has been playing better and better as the game has gone on. There's Ivory on the bench. Marshall, who just converted the extra point now, 31 of 33 on his extra point attempts. His father, Tommy, was a former Furman player and was an assistant coach at Furman on that 1988 national championship team. Back to receive the kick, Hakeem Ford for Georgia Southern. Well, you don't want to give up a cheap score here, that's for sure. So you could see a possible squip. Going deep. Ford from the two. And burrows his way up there at the 20-yard line. I don't know how he did that. He took the took the low route. First four possessions for Georgia Southern. First drive, they scored the first touchdown scored against Furman in the first period all year long, but their last three possessions have all ended with punts. So as you can see that the defense of Furman, they've made adjustments. That man right there might be interested in a few adjustments himself. Paul Johnson, the head coach at Georgia Southern. Georgia Southern, one timeout remaining with 32 seconds left in the first half. Flags are down. And Myers crosses the 20 and up near the 21. Well, I think it's against the offense. Sort of bringing it back. I think two guys moved at the same time. And this will go against the We have an illegal shift. Two men moving on the offense at the snap. Five yard foul. Repeat first down. So with 26 seconds remaining, if I'm Paul Johnson, I just want to get out. <laughs> exactly. Get back to the locker room. <laughs> Let's go and talk about it. Ethan, this game is tied, but Furman's obviously got the momentum right now. No, they do. I mean, to put points on the board as they have, to come back strong defensively as they have, you have to say they have the upper hand because coming out in the beginning of the game, I thought it was going to be a Georgia Southern blowout by the way they went right down the field, but now they will have to go back and look at things and make some changes offensively. Jay Revere leads Georgia Southern back to the locker room. Got an injury report on Georgia Southern's Michael Youngblood. Took a shot to the kidney. He will return in the second half. 
and we will return with our halftime activities. J.R. Revere with a touchdown run. Lewis Ivory with a touchdown run. We're tied at seven at halftime. We are at halftime, and what a game it's been. The game of the year, potentially, in NCAA 1AA college football out of the Southern Conference. Second-ranked Furman with a late touchdown, a touchdown inside of a minute to go in the first half. They're tied with Georgia Southern at seven. Hi, everybody. Dave Weekly here, and what a great first half we've had. But before the game, we had a lot of excitement as well. The outstanding tailback for the Georgia Southern Eagles, Adrian Peterson, the Walter Payton Award winner back in 1999, had his jersey retired in a terrific, emotion-filled ceremony here at Paulson Stadium in Statesboro, Georgia. And there's a good look at number three, Adrian Peterson, wrapping up just a fabulous career at Georgia Southern. He's had a very good first half as well, 50 yards right. Rushing. Peterson, surrounded by his teammates, many of his high school teammates, made the trip up from Florida for this ceremony. This is senior day at Georgia Southern, and there is number three. And the fans, a sellout crowd here, gave him a big ovation. Number three, Adrian Peterson. A facsimile of his jersey will hang here at Paulson Stadium forever. AP with a lot of terrific memories. Adrian Peterson, he's been Mr. Everything for Georgia Southern, the unquestioned leader of the Eagles. What a terrific career he's had in Statesboro. very confident in himself, but he doesn't really have a big ego. I think that, uh, and he likes to, to take on challenges. I think that if you challenge him, you're playing right into his hands. And uh, he, uh, very close with his family, close with his friends, uh, kind of a, he'll have some fun, but he's kind of a no-nonsense guy. When he sets his mind and, and has a goal to do something, he works towards that goal, and he's not going to let uh, anything from the outside interfere with it. He's very focused on what he wants to accomplish. Our team go uh, to, to win another another title. I, I, I think if you, you allow focusing on the record, the Heisman, you, you have a sense to lose the concept of the team team goal. And football is a team sport, you know. So my my main goal is to, to get back to. He's got the complete package for a running back, and the one thing that uh, that maybe other guys don't have is such a fierce competitive spirit. I mean, he loves to play football, and and he loves to compete. And uh, when he gets out there, he's kind of in his setting, and uh, you know I think that he's having a lot of fun when he's playing. Adrian Peterson is taking care of things right now. Peterson is all the way down to the 30. He's still on his feet. Peterson still on his feet. Peterson down to the 10. Oh, my. The defense know uh, about 85, 90% of the time who getting the ball. So I, I, I see that at the time, you know, when the linebacker walk up in the gap and try to stop it. I just see that as, as, as a challenge to to not only get the first down, but to um, score. In 1999, Adrian Peterson won the Walter Payton Award, Division I-AA's version of the Heisman Trophy. But his lifelong dream is to play in the same stadiums and on the same fields that Sweetness once did. A uh, dream that I had since I was a little kid when I used to to watch games on Sunday night, you know. I want to I want to play in the NFL, you know. We need to play outside, calling each other who Herschel Walker or Walter Payton. You know, that's me. That's me. And then, and I mean, that's just, it was a dream every, every since I can remember. Adrian Peterson, a terrific success story at Georgia Southern. The Eagles and Furman tied at seven. An update from Atlanta in the Southern Sports Report in a moment. 
After a terrific first half between Furman and Georgia Southern, a matchup of two of the top five teams in NCAA 1AA college football, we are set to begin the third quarter. Furman will get the ball first. Brian Bratton is back to receive it, and Shelton is set to kick it for the Eagles. take it out to the 16-yard line. A great defensive play for Georgia Southern to begin the second half by Chris Brown, a freshman from America's High. And here is the possessions for Furman. You can see they started slowly, but they did drive into Georgia Southern territory with their first three possessions. And then that terrific drive to end the first half. Ethan Horton, 15 plays, 80 yards, a touchdown. Ivory took it to the end zone. But I think number 35, Chris Brown, he has come out and set the tone for the defense. Let's go out there and hit people. First and 10, play action. Napier, the pass. Reinhardt's got it. And he's very close to a first down up to the 26-yard line. Well, that play is there because of the cushion by Dreek Cooper, but also this Furman offense continues to throw the ball on first down when I think the defense of Georgia Southern, I think they're looking for Lewis Ivory, and they've been very successful on first down with throwing the football. The Bear now with three catches for 27 yards. It is a first down. From the eye this time, Emerson and Ivory behind Napier. The pitch to Ivory. He'll try the right side. Great cutback. Nearly broke it, but is brought down at the 34. To thank number 56, Joe Scott, the middle linebacker, for being there because he almost cut that ball back across the grain for a bigger game, but it was a nice cut from the beginning. He's just going to catch a nice little pitch, start to his right, read his blocking as he gets good blocking at the point of attack. Nice cut and get back up and set. Bam! He almost snuck out of there. Ivory now 14 carries, 68 yards. Here he comes again. He's got the first down. And James Young hops on his back and brings him down, but not before he picks up the first down at the 38. Well, as we can see, just with these two carries, and he's, he's a different back already. I mean, the line play, they're getting nice surge, but he's getting good vision back there. He's reading the blocks, reading where the space is, as now he's picked up 71 yards. He is going to get his yards. He just needs everyone else to jump on the bandwagon and let's help pull this cart. Can you imagine Ivory in a Georgia Southern uniform? It almost happened. We'll tell you about it in a moment. First and 10. Play action to Ivory. Protection's great for Napier. He's got the tight end. Hits Sansbury again. And he is knocked out of bounds at the 43-yard line. Sansbury just runs a deep crossing route. We talked about this kid at halftime. He must neutralize the linebackers. Therefore, they have to be concerned about where he is. I mean, he's just going to come on a crossing route. Bam, he's wide open because the linebackers are looking at 34 in the backfield. Sansbury will take a break. He's having quite a game. Five catches, 80 yards. Furman on the march. Ivory. And he will take it down near the 36-yard line. We asked Paul Johnson of Georgia Southern yesterday about recruiting Lewis Ivory, and he said, yeah, they, Georgia Southern looked at him when he was at Peach County High School, but they were only going to take one running back in that class, and that turned out to be Adrian Peterson. He says, in hindsight, he would have loved to take them both. Well, Lewis Ivory's getting stronger. Paul Johnson, he's just like, oh, no. I mean, what, what can we do to stop this kid? Because I think the drive at the end with for a score has given them life on offense, and they're playing like it. Ivory really didn't get too much attention his first two years in high school when he played fullback. Really came on late. Napier, the pass. Reinhardt's got it. Still on his feet. Finally brought down at the 12. Well, they like something on Drew Cooper. Because that's the cornerback they are attacking right now. Reinhardt, earlier, he had a deep outside route. A little play action. Read the field, throw the ball back to the right. Another route to the outside. Where is the cornerback? I mean, he's giving so much cushion, he can't make the play. Reinhardt falls down, trying to make more yards after the catch. Reinhardt now with two big catches on this drive to begin the third quarter for Furman. First and 10 at the Georgia Southern 13. Ivory again. 
Youngblood back in the game and leading the charge. Drops him at the 15 for a loss of two. Youngblood left the game late in the second quarter, was injured on the touchdown run by Ivory, took a shot to the kidney, but he's back in the game now. Hey, this is a big game. Tie game at that. Nice crowd. Nobody wants to leave this game. I mean, these are the type of games you live for. Furman brought a huge contingent of fans. They sold all of their tickets. This game's a sellout. Loss of two, second and 12. Napier from the gun this time. Line of scrimmage is the 15. Emerson will take it back near the original line of scrimmage. Emerson is the type of back that just keeps you honest. You don't really key on 34 too much because 45 saying I can run the football too, but he won't carry it as much as Lewis Ivory. Just a nice little inside trap, good blocking. A better play by the defense. Third down and 10. I like Reinhardt here for a catch. Napier flushed. Incomplete intended for Ivory. He was open, but the pass was behind him at the Eagle 10. Well, he was looking for number seven, Bear Reinhardt, and also number 89, Trent Stansbury. And both of those guys were covered, but also he had to fight off a little pressure, so he didn't really have a lot of time to read the covers down the field, but that's where his head was looking in that direction for both of those guys. Danny Marshall on to attempt a field goal, seven of eight this year, but only has a 33-yard long. He had a 12 straight string snapped at East Tennessee State with a 47-yard miss. This will be a 30-yard attempt from the left hash. Got it. And Furman is in front for the first time today. That's the way you like to start the half. Get the ball, go down the field. Although it wasn't seven points, it was three points, but they do have the lead and points on the board. Danny Marshall, 30-yard field goal. Furman in front of Georgia Southern, 10-7 early in the third. Furman in front for the first time in this game, leading Georgia Southern 10-7 early in the third. Television's most unique brand of football commentary airs Sunday with NFL This Morning on Fox Sports Net. This season, football funny man Jay Moore and the rest of the NFL This Morning crew welcome Boomer Esiason to the show that critics call the most unique, groundbreaking, off-the-wall 90 minutes of football news. NFL This Morning, it's the pregame show that's not really a pregame show. Tomorrow at 10.30 a.m. Eastern right here on Fox Sports Net. Furman now in front, first time in this game, 10-7. Sun beginning to go down here in Statesboro. Hakeem Ford set to receive the kick. Marshall with the boot. Ford from the six. Got through the first wave and took it up to the 25, a 19-yard kickoff return. Well, now it's Georgia Southern's turn to see if they can get something going because in the latter stages of the first half, second quarter, they stall offensively. Paul Johnson, he doesn't have really a game plan, so we'll see what he does. A scoring drive, 10 plays, 71 yards. But can he make the changes? by on site, by just seeing it. Can he go in and talk to his players and really get them to adjust? First and 10 from the 25-yard line. We'll see those adjustments. Revere with the pitch. Again, good running room for the speedy Mark Myers. Up to the 36-yard line and a first down. Well, that was one change from the first half because what he has done, he has forced the pitch sooner. I mean, the back just takes a little pitch step, and he's back inside, and nobody is there in terms of responsibilities because things are happening just a little sooner. He's not giving the defense time to think about it. Revere directing traffic. Kept it. And the pitch to Walden. Zareem Walden 
who was a defensive back on this team until three weeks ago with his second carry of the game. Well, down, Gary, more than Sterling Frierson, also 43, the linebacker, forced Revere into a quicker pitch, and I think defensively they've made changes too. They're saying that we are not going to allow number nine to beat us. Let's get the ball out of his hands and force those slot backs to make some plays up the field. Walden, a junior from Marietta, Georgia, Paul Johnson, the coach of Georgia Southern, told us yesterday he felt one of the key matchups in this game was his offensive line against the front seven of Furman. And here goes Adrian Peterson, takes it out to the 43-yard line. Into Furman territory, another first down. Well, someone forgot to tell the defense as we have the guy down, I think it's number 78, Ryan Spencer, that number three is a pretty good back as well. Great blocking at the point of attack. He gets up the field through three guys, gets back to the outside. But Adrian Peterson is definitely a player in this game, and he wants to be heard because so far, Lewis Ivory, he's looked pretty good coming out after the half. Number three, AP, Adrian Peterson. And Georgia Southern back in Furman territory for the first time in a while. Spencer is up. Makes you wonder if it's that ankle. Well, I hope not because here's a kid that has made a few plays here today. And they really need him defensively to disrupt that option attack up the middle with Peterson. Peterson, the leading rusher in the Southern Conference, nearly 136 yards per game. First and 10 from the Furman 37. Revere. The pitch, Myers trying to get wide, maybe a yard. Good defense by Furman. Josh Cooper led the charge for the defense. Shelvis Smith, a strong safety, a senior from College Park, Georgia, also there. But I better throw in Will Bolton because he helps string out this play. Little whirly bird option, get the ball out there. There's 20. And he doesn't really make the tackle, but he forces him to everyone else. And Myers has nowhere to go. Gain of a yard. Three wide receivers, two to the left for Revere. It's a quarterback draw. Near the 32 yard line. Well, that was just an all out play to try to get Revere back into this game. A nice little draw play defensively. They didn't go for anything. I mean, they weren't fooled by any other fakes, and he's not getting the outside corner as he was in the first half. So I think on the defensive side, John Thrift, Sterling Frierson, those guys are staying home on the outside. Big third down play, third and six. Revere the late pitch to Myers. Myers is knocked out of bounds at the 29. It's going to be fourth down and a short three. I think they go for it, but also number 20, Will Bolton. He's there once again, and Bolton is just coming down the line of scrimmage. He gets some help from John Thrift sliding back to the outside, 44, Mike Killian. We said this team did not have any individual stars. They must do it collectively. And so far, after the first job, they've come together as a unit, and collectively, you can see three and four guys getting to the football. Georgia Southern is going to go for it. On fourth down, if you're thinking about a field goal, Shelton's long of the year is 42 yards. This would have been a 46-yard attempt. Peterson, no, fake it to Myers. Spinning has the first down at the 26-yard line. The fake to Peterson, Revere with the pitch to Myers, and he got the clutch first down. But I'll tell you what, number 20, Will Bolton, he was coming in there Bolton. He got blocked, so therefore he couldn't come across. He's going to get blocked by the right guard. And he doesn't get there, and there you're going to see Myers is up in it for the first down. But he can thank number 65, Reggie Cordy, for that play because he made his job very easy. Georgia Southern, a fourth down conversion to keep the drive alive. First and 10 at the 26. Revere on the keeper to the 21. I think Georgia Southern offensively, they've decided to run the ball more in 
in the middle of the field and try to get the slot backs involved. I'm pretty sure they will keep Adrian Peterson in the mix. But Revere is now just taking a little two to three steps off the line of scrimmage, up inside, slot backs, Adrian Peterson. They're trying to mix those four or five guys up on the inside and just get the ball out to the outside and make something happen. Ryan Spencer is back in there on the line for Furman. Brandon Poole made the last tackle for the Paladins. Second and five. Just got the playoff. Revere on the keeper. And it was Sterling Frierson, the senior from Woodrow, South Carolina, who made the stop. The thing about Frierson, as I stated before, you know, this team returns 10 defensive starters. Only one spot open, it goes to Frierson. So the pressure's on him to keep it up because everybody else have been together. But watch the surge here. Defensively, they're playing on the, on the other side of the line of scrimmage. And when you have that type of defensive pressure, defensively, normally you win. Frierson has regained most of the speed loss due to a torn ACL against Western Carolina back in 1999. Adrian Peterson near the first down at the 15. Well, he got the first down because of the second effort. He was originally stopped along the line of scrimmage, but he kept going up the field and forward. Nice little dive inside. But he's hit there. He stopped, but he bounces off for the first down. They won't measure. It is a first down. Georgia Southern now in the red zone. An area where they had so much trouble last week on the road at East Tennessee State. The quick handoff to Peterson, and he is dropped in the backfield, and the fans want a late hit. Well, Silva Smith, he was there rather late. I mean, Peterson had already gone down at number 93. Brandon Poole makes the stop. I mean, now they're starting to crowd the line of scrimmage. That was a late hit, I thought. Although he had headed toward the ground, very questionable call there. To this point in the game, Furman only one penalty for five yards. They're the least penalized team in the Southern Conference. Loss of three, second and 13. Revere. Can he get away? No. The Paladins were after him, and Richie Jackson, the senior from Cincinnati, finished the job. I mean, 11 guys pursued the football. 11 guys made the tackle in my mind. One guy gets the credit, down the line. Responsibility there, John Thrift. Reverses his field, great athletic move. Another guy misses, Frierson. Another guy makes the play, two other guys. Richie Jackson makes the stop, but 11 guys, they made the play. Georgia Southern needs to reach the six-yard line on this third down play for a first down. And Peterson takes it down near the 17. Well, Brandon Poole, Dave, he disrupted the play. All he did was knife into the backfield. I mean, anytime you can get the fullback to bounce or slow him down, and especially a guy like Peterson, you have a very good chance of stopping this off and stopping him because when he has to stop and restart, now you have the momentum because you're continuously running to the football. This will be a 35-yard attempt from the right hash. It would tie the game. And it does. Scott Shelton, 35-yard field goal, 4-13 to go third quarter. Georgia Southern now tied again with Furman. This game was knotted at seven at the half. It's 10 all now. Welcome back to Fox Sports Nets coverage of Southern Conference football. We're live from Paulson Stadium in Statesboro, Georgia. Dave Weekly along with Ethan Horton. 4-13 to go in the third quarter. We're all tied at 10 following a 35-yard field goal by the Eagles' Scott Shelton. The Eagles answered the bell with a nice little drive themselves. And I think this is the type of game we expect today. Close game, big plays in spurts, and not a lot of miscues. And we haven't seen a lot of miscues and definitely not a lot of flags. A few, but not an awful lot to take the game from what it really is. 
important. Brian Bratton set to receive the kick. Scott Shelton set to kick off after that 35-yard field goal. Got the good foot into that one, and that's a touchback at the 20. Just to get back to what you mentioned, Ethan, we have stayed away from the fumbles yeah. and the interceptions. Furman leads the Southern Conference in turnover margin. 14-play drive, 57 yards, six and a half minutes, capped by a 35-yard field goal from Scott Shelton that tied the game at 10. Well, Furman's coming off of a two-week layoff, so they should have the kinks out of their system. Georgia Southern should have gotten theirs out last week. Ivory and Peterson, both with 75 yards to this point in the game. Emerson, the fullback, burrows his way near the 23. The freshman from Newman, Georgia, went to the same high school that produced Furman defensive back John Keith, now with the San Francisco 49ers. Paul Johnson roaming the sidelines again for the Eagles as his team tied at 10. Here's Ivory. Found some running room amazingly in the middle of that line and took it up to the 26 where it'll be third down and four. Well, he's having to work for his yards. He has 75, he's run well. And they're not making it easy for him on the defensive side of the football. I mean, I don't think he'll get it here. Third and three, I like a nice little pass to the tight end. Bobby Johnson, the head coach of Furman, was very concerned about Lewis Ivory's health heading into this game. He wanted to know how Ivory would react after he took a tough hit on that collarbone. I think he's getting his answer. Ivory's answering the bell for this huge game. Third and four. <laughs> Lots of finger pointing. Corey Middlebrook's 58 was across the line of scrimmage. on the defensive side. And I think they're calling it against Furman. Dead ball foul, all start. Illegal movement by a lineman prior to the snap. Five yard foul, third down. Robert Rougeau is our referee tonight. Well, I tell you, oh yeah, left guard 75, Marty Priori. Jumped a little too soon. One of the elite offensive linemen in the Southern Conference. He won't make a mistake like that often. Third and nine. Napier with all kinds of time. The pass is caught. First down up at the 36-yard line to James Thomas, a junior from Mariana, Florida. I tell you what, he can thank his tight end number 89, Trent Sansbury, for that completion because he had a nice little drag route about six yards. He clears out everybody. Look at the cushion here that Drake Cooper is giving up. Wes is wide open. I mean, you can't cover a guy like that, giving up six yards. I mean, he's going to get off the line. Disrupt him, get up and bump him. Drake Cooper, they're working on you. Furman finding some rare success against Georgia Southern through the air. Thomas has the best hands among the Furman wide receivers, and he makes a clutch catch. Pitch to Ivory, 45, across the 50, another first down, and all the way down to the Georgia Southern 44. The block by number 89. Do I have to say his name? Because I've said it so many times. <laughs> Trent Sansbury, he gets a block on number 18, David Young. That allows Ivory a chance to get to the outside. So far, Stansbury, if you talk about MVP players in this game, I realize Lewis Ivory is the name, but Stansbury, he definitely has made some plays here that, that are going unnoticed. Made some clutch catches in the first half, and that time it was a big block for Ivory to spring him loose. More flags. Stops the clock with 90 seconds remaining in a very, very quick third quarter. Well, it's our left guard again, Marty Prioli. He moved. 75, that's two flags on you. Dead ball foul, part of the start. 
False start against the offensive line. Five yard foul. Priori can't be happy about what's going on right now. Because anytime you get a flag, you put your offense at a disadvantage. And when you're on the road, you don't need too many of those. No, you don't. Priori making his 40th consecutive start today. Here's Ivory. The carry that will put him over 100 yards. He crosses the 40 and takes it down to the 37. And he's fired up about it. Well, not only is he fired up, the offensive linemen are coming off the line as if they are fired up also. They're saying, Coach, let's run the football. Look at this hole. I mean, everybody's getting blocked. He's through the hole. He almost keeps his feet. I mean, that's a sign of a good back getting through the little cracks. Ivory now 110 yards and that late second quarter touchdown. Second and four. Emerson still on his feet. He's got the first down. Takes it to the 30 yard line. Emerson is a J.R. Revere in this offense. You keep your eyes on 34 because he Emerson is the guy in the offense, but sooner or later, number 45, Eric Emerson is going to hit you with a quick hitting play as he did there for the first down. So now you have to keep an eye on both guys, and if I'm a linebacker, I better be aware of where they are on the field. It's a first down at the 31-yard line. Here's Ivory. And again, it's good running room for the senior, Lewis Ivory, down to the 22-yard line. Nice vision because that play was designed to go to the outside. He started to the outside. He cut back to his left to the inside, but he made that play with just a cut to the left. And we have come to the end of the third quarter. That's the end of the third quarter with your score. Georgia Southern and Furman heading to the fourth, tied at 10. Here in Statesboro, our game summary as we begin the fourth quarter. Furman finding some success passing against this normally rugged Georgia Southern defense. Adrian Peterson, 75 rushing yards, but no touchdowns to this point. Lewis Ivory, 118 rushing yards and a 23-yard touchdown run late in the second quarter. We're not too far from Eagle Creek. Furman on the march. Second and two at the Georgia Southern 22. Loose football. I think they got it back. It was a botched exchange between Napier and Emerson, the fullback. So when you're down there on the pile when they're trying to move everybody out, you don't let go of the ball. You hold on to the ball because at the bottom of the pile, you never know who has it when the official gets down there. Southern's got the football. At the bottom of the pile for the Eagles, Michael Youngblood. Just a mix-up. Well, a new back in the backfield. Just a mix-up in the backfield, and that's why I think there's a problem because Corey Tent hasn't played all day. Now he comes in in a big game and make a play, and it's a fumble. It wasn't Emerson, it was the new back, Tant. Peterson. To the 25 and that's it, maybe a gain of two. It'll be second down and eight. These two terrific teams ranked, both of them in the top five in one double A, only one turnover today. This is a big stand for this defense as well as this offense in a tight game, close game turnover you must get points in this type of situation you can hear those Georgia Southern fans really into this game a sold-out crowd Revere on the play action caught Walden got a block brought down at the 36 and his former defensive back is making some big plays in the biggest game of the year. But it's a nice play because Walden is going to trail Carl Curry number 80. See, he's running behind the receiver, so therefore that's how the defensive back is confused because he's like, where are these guys? Josh Cooper had two guys to cover, and he was the only guy that was over there. Zareem Walden 
A huge play. Moments to go. Furman was marching towards a possible go-ahead score. Now here comes Georgia Southern. Adrian Peterson to the 29. Well, these games are made of big plays. He only gets three or four a game. That was a big play for this Brought offense because now three. it puts them in Furman territory where it, look at this offense, they score over 70% of the time in the red zone. I realized last week, seven trips, one touchdown, but the percentages say this team will put points on the board. AP with a six yard gain. He's also closing in on the 100 yard mark rushing. And a loose ball. Boy, that thing draws a crowd. Revere was able to get right back on it. It looked like he was trying to slide the ball into Adrian Peterson. Peterson didn't seem to have gotten the ball. No, he pulled it out. He pulled it out and it was knocked out of his hand. Number 98, with Ryan Sperling back there disrupting the play. Fortuitous bounce for Paul Johnson. Not a good bounce for Bobby Johnson. Revere, the ball came right back to him. Third down and four. Revere on the keeper. First down and more. J.R. Revere still on his feet. Finally stopped at the 12-yard line. That's an 18-yard gain and a Georgia Southern first down. And number 20, Will Bounce and misses it. I mean, Rivera has come back into his fourth quarter. He's making plays just like he did in the first to start the game. Pulls it out. He's up the field. He makes the guy miss. Responsibility football. If you make the guy miss, nobody else is there because they are really keying their reads, and he's just running around, and nobody can tackle him. After recovering the fumble by, by Furman, Georgia Southern with a first down now at the Paladin 12. Revere, 134 yards in total offense. Peterson dives to the nine. The big game players, they will make big plays in big games. And so far now that the game is coming down, pretty much I think they to who had the ball last. <laughs> you know, the big players must make the big plays, and right now with Georgia Southern, Going in, their big players are making plays. Those are the football just inside the 10 yard line for Georgia Southern. Peterson fighting his way near the goal line, down to the two. I mean, he's carrying tacklers. He's getting stronger as well. Here's a kid that's determined. When he was hit right along the line of scrimmage, he still gets up the field. He's coming right at you. Three guys there and miss it. He's up the field. Just a leg strength. That's what's phenomenal with this kid. Cedric Ritter finally brought him down. I think you give it to him again. It's first and goal for Georgia Southern. Peterson now 94 yards rushing on the night. Peterson stretching out near the goal line, not in. He makes a nice knifing dive in there. He started to the outside to the left and he cut back. He saw a little daylight. There's not a lot of room down there and everything happens pretty fast. Number 98's in the backfield. The Brian Sperling, so he really disrupted the the charge into the end zone. Shelvis Smith, a diving tackle, kept Peterson out of the end zone, but now Georgia Southern is inside the one-yard line. Revere, the keeper. Touchdown, Georgia Southern. Revere with his second touchdown of the game. Well, that was a nice drive off of a turnover because we haven't had a lot of those today. And anytime you can convert points and take points away because Furman, I think they were headed in for a score themselves. And now they're looking at the scoreboard and they're behind. Here's Shelton to add the extra point. Revere is the holder.
Georgia Southern back in front by 10. Georgia Southern 17, Furman 10. Southern now with a 17-10 lead. Shelton with the kickoff. Bratton thought about it, but will not bring it out of the end zone. All-time rushing leaders in the Southern Conference. AP 62. 100 yards, nearly 63. And in the number three hole, Lewis Ivory closing in on 5,000 yards. Lewis Ivory is now the first running back to go over 100 yards against Georgia Southern this season. He's also the first running back to go over 100 yards two games in a row against the Eagles since Marcel Ship of UMass in 1998 and 99. Speaking of which, Ivory the carry, a two-yard gain as he tries to go off the right side. As we can see, the momentum has swung in Georgia Southern's favor. I mean, putting points on the board, that was huge. And to drive the ball down there to get those points, I think, made it extra special because it also worked the clock. So Furman has the football, and they trail by a touchdown. But it's not time to panic. If you Furman. And they have plenty of time to go back down the field and put points on the board. Second down and seven. Napier floated one in the direction of his tight end, Trent Sansbury. He was open, but the ball just floated away on him. Well, they came back with the play that was successful earlier. A deep 16-yard in. It wasn't there. 21,593 on hand at Paulson Stadium in Statesboro for this game. Sixth largest crowd ever in this facility. And they've seen a great game. Big third down for Furman. After Georgia Southern scored a touchdown, can the Eagle defense hold the Paladins to a three and out? Nowhere to go for the freshman West. But Chris Brown read that play for the middle of the field. And by the time the ball was snapped, he was running to West to make sure he was not going to get a completion because earlier that play was successful. But Chris Brown, he stayed home and he read the quarterback. A big play by Brown. Brown among the defensive backs stepping up for Georgia Southern tonight in the absence of the starting left corner, Dion Stokes. Stokes unable to go tonight because of a hip flexor. Lee Willis on to punt for Furman. line 831 to go fourth quarter Georgia Southern's got the ball back trying to protect a seven-point lead 17 10 leading Furman in the 1999 division one double national title game Youngstown State and Georgia Southern Greg Hill a 42 yard touchdown run in the first quarter put the Eagles on top of the Penguins 10 7 then Adrian Peterson a three yard TD run started a 28 point explosion in the second quarter Georgia Southern led the Penguins 38 14 at the half this is known as the run at Georgia Southern 57 yards it capped a day in which AP raced for 247 yards and three touchdowns and Georgia Southern collected its fifth national championship, defeating Jim Trussell and the Youngstown State Penguins 59-24. Paul Johnson, two national titles, four consecutive Southern Conference crowns, 57-9 overall. J.R. Revere, two rushing touchdowns, throws this one away. 
when they came back with the same play that they were successful with earlier. But this time it wasn't there because Josh Cooper, he did his job. We're at Paulson Stadium in Statesboro, Georgia. Furman and Georgia Southern meeting up in maybe the game of the year in 1AA football. Definitely the game of the year in the Southern Conference. Yeah. Dave Weekly, Ethan Horton. Eight and a half minutes to go in the game. Georgia Southern leads Furman 17-10. This game was tied seven all at the half. Absolutely no win right now at Paulson Stadium. Second down and ten. Peterson fights his way up near the 35, and it's going to be third down and long. Obviously a big play, Ethan, coming up for that Furman defense. It's a very big play because offensively, they don't like to throw the football. I don't think they'll throw it here. Should they throw it? Yes, but I look for another option play to put the ball in Revere's hands or for him to make a decision, keep it or give it to the slot back. Bobby Johnson, the head football coach at Furman, knows a little bit about defense. He was the defensive coordinator of the Paladins for 10 years. Revere simply throws it away, stops the clock, and Furman's going to get the ball back. Well, that was a dead giveaway because anytime this team breaks what I would consider the bone in terms of the slot back or the wingman, and when they place them along the line of scrimmage, it tells a defense pass because that's not their natural set. So that play was definitely given away just because of the offensive setup because you don't normally do that. Adrian Peterson, who's rushed for over 100 yards in virtually every game he's played in at Georgia Southern, the exception, a win earlier this year against Appalachian State, now with 98 rushing yards. Shelton just got that one away. Wow. It's a poor kick. Furman's going to have the ball at the Georgia Southern 49-yard line when we return to Statesboro. Georgia Southern 17, Furman 10, seven and a half minutes to go in the... Georgia Southern fans love their Eagles. They lead Furman by seven, 17-10, but after a 14-yard punt by Scott Shelton, Furman will start this drive from the Georgia Southern 49. Lewis Ivory. Just know where to go. Good defense. Derek Butler came up from his linebacking spot, a freshman from Orangeburg, South Carolina, to make the stop on Furman's all-time leading rusher. But also, Furman has gotten away from throwing the ball on first down. First half, very successful. Beginning of this half, very successful. And for some reason, they've gotten away from that. And now everybody's keying on Lewis Ivory. A gain of only a yard, second and nine. Napier, swing pass to Bear Reinhardt across the 45, stretches out to the 42, and it'll be third down. Well, they seem like they were a little confused in the secondary. Maybe they corrected themselves because the defensive backs were trying to get the safety, the safety, they were trying to get the corners, and they were going back and forth. As Reinhardt's just a nice little slip screen, he catches it, he gets up the field, and Drake Cooper. You know, he makes the stop. Closing in on six minutes in the fourth. Third and three for Furman. Ivory, the lone setback, short drop, pass caught. To the 29-yard line goes James Thomas. Well, these cornerbacks, they must respect these receivers because they're giving a seven-yard cushion. I mean, Thomas could have fallen down, gotten up, fallen down, gotten up, and he still would have gotten the first down because, look at here, wide open, where's the defender? He's about 15 yards deep out of the back pedal. Aaron Whitaker was giving him a big time cushion yes. on that side. From just inside the Georgia Southern 30, Napier on play action. Gonna send this one for Reinhardt, incomplete at the five yard line. David Young, the strong safety, had the coverage for Georgia Southern. Well, it was nice coverage by Young because Furman tried to run a wheel route, which means Bear Reinhardt, he's going to start into the flat. It takes a little time to develop. 
Because Napier, he doesn't look at anyone else. He's coming to his left. Reinhardt couldn't get there, but you try to go into the flat up the field, something I think they thought they could have gotten, but David Young, he was there for the defense. Good look at David Young, Richard Jr., Columbia, South Carolina. Considered to be one of the best ever safeties at Georgia Southern. Furman did not get the playoff in time. It's a big play. Check it. Furman got a timeout call before the play clock expired. We didn't see the call, but they did get the timeout. 540 to go in the fourth quarter. Furman on the march, but the Paladins trail Georgia Southern by 7. 17-10 in Statesboro. Georgia Southern 17, Furman 10, 540 to go in the fourth quarter. Furman got the timeout call just prior to the play clock expiring. Furman now with two timeouts remaining. Georgia Southern has their full complement of three timeouts. Second and 10, Napier incomplete. Trying to hit a diving Isaac West at the Georgia Southern 12-yard line. Well, he was under pressure by LeBlanc and Corey Middlebrooks. But when you have guys open with five minutes to go, as he was, I mean, it's coming to crunch time. If it's probably not already. Third down conversions, Furman, six of 12, so they're 50%. Georgia Southern, four of 10. So they've been pretty consistent today, but this is a big one right here. Fourth and ten. All right, Ethan. It's fourth and ten from the Georgia Southern 29. Well, you got to go for it. That was a big drop because although he was short, you're looking at third and four, which is a much easier down. It's not that. Now you have to go into your playbook and find your best play for third and ten, and it won't be easy because defensively they know you have to pass on this fourth down. Fourth down and ten. Southern fans making lots of noise. Napier fires. Intercepted. Intercepted by Derek Butler. Second turnover of the day for Furman. And Georgia Southern with a big defensive stop. With a big stop by the defense. Butler, huge play set in the middle of the field. I don't know where Napier was going. I think he was trying to hit his tight end, but nobody was open. 43 just six. He reads. He's trying to hit actually Bear Reinhardt. Nice play, but I would have gone for it because the way Georgia Southern has moved the ball the second half, you don't know if you're going to get the ball back. So you got to take your chances, and I, I like the chance, just a bad play by the quarterback. For Napier, just his fourth interception of the year, but it comes at a terrible time for Furman. Adrian Peterson on the carry. And that should put him over 100 yards on the game. Peterson has now rushed over 100 yards at least in 51 of his last 52 games overall. That's including playoff competition. And 39 of his last 40 regular season games. Well, with two timeouts, there's still time, but defensively, they must go three and out. Anything beyond that, I think it looks pretty bleak. It's Peterson again. The first down and more. Peterson all the way out to the 44-yard line. 14 more yards for Peterson. He's running like he's a determined man. I mean, he's down in his stance. He's coming out hard, low. There's a hole there. 
He runs through a tackle, runs over a defender, carries two more. That's just sheer determination. Peterson, fewer yards, but more yards per carry. And more importantly, Georgia Southern has the lead on the scoreboard. Again, it's Adrian Peterson. Peterson! All the way down to the 27. Peterson coming up big. Big-time players make big-time plays in big games. And on a day in which his jersey was retired. This is his day. They're back to the inside dive. Good blocking by the guys up front. I mean, the line surge had the defenders 10 yards up the field. He just follows in behind that surge, and he's up the field for a huge game. Down to the 28-yard line for number three, Adrian Peterson. Time now obviously becoming an ally of Georgia Southern. Three and a half minutes to go in the fourth quarter. Revere on the keeper, and he is dropped by Brandon Poole. Furman now with only two timeouts. They need the ball. Well, they're trying to save those timeouts for if they get the ball back, and I know that Coach Johnson doesn't want to use those at this time. He's trying to wait as long as he can, but I don't know if Coach Bobby Johnson, I better say, can really wait that long because the clock continues. Revere, no gain. Second and ten. An odd-looking exchange between Revere and Peterson. And Furman calls a timeout. It'll be third down and four for Georgia Southern. Well, if I'm Paul Johnson, I keep feeding my star. I mean, they haven't really stopped him here in the second half. He has gotten stronger up front. They are getting a good push. They are already in field goal range, so I don't think we'll see a pass. Just grind it out and force Furman to use their, their timeouts because they're now they're playing against the clock. And Furman, they must try to get a turnover if possible. Georgia Southern is the defending NCAA 1AA national champ. They won their second consecutive national title last year. Facing Montana, eyeing another championship. Adrian Peterson, this is called the run two. 57 yards. It was a big run for Georgia Southern as they fought back after a valiant comeback from Montana. Chris Johnson. A 49-yard touchdown catch. And Georgia Southern won its sixth Division I-AA National Championship, edging Montana 27-25. Third and ten. It's Peterson. John Thrift, the senior from Hartwell, Georgia, made the stop for Furman. And Furman has burned its last timeout. Well, now you try to strip the football because there's 2.32 left. If I'm Georgia Southern, I just try to keep the ball in play and don't go out of bounds. Ethan, you also have the opportunity to kick a field goal here. It would be a 42-yarder. One other Southern Conference game to report right now. What a wild one between the Citadel Bulldogs and the Chattanooga Mox. Citadel wins in two overtimes, 2017. But depending on what happens here, I would probably kick the field goal. But if the clock continues to run, I would look at downing it. They have two downs here, third down, fourth down. Adrian Peterson. Look at this kid, 147 yards rushing. His 39th career 100-plus yard game. Outstanding performance by this kid. It's his day, senior day, big crowd, everything on the line. He's come to perform. And Ethan, 
Georgia Southern will go for the field goal. Revere will hold it. Shelton will kick it. This will come from the middle of the field. It'll be a 42-yard attempt. On the way. Dead center, dead solid, perfect for Scott Shelton. His second field goal of the day. I don't think Georgia Southern can make up 10 points in this time span unless Georgia Southern just falls down and doesn't do anything. But this kick is good from the beginning. Spot kick up, positive kick, good. I mean, this team is 9-2 under the lights. 107 and 9 in afternoon games at all time 116 and 11. So the chances are, Dave, <laughs> it's a lot of time left, but I think they've won this one. Georgia Southern now with their largest lead of the game at 20 to 10. Back in 1985, Georgia Southern and Furman met for the very first time, and it was for a national championship. Herman Barrow, a 12-yard touchdown catch. And this is the play they refer to as the catch. Frank Johnson, 13-yard touchdown grab. Tracy Ham finished with 419 yards and four TDs. Another look at the catch. And Georgia Southern had its first national championship, 44-42. This is from back in the days before these two outstanding teams were Southern Conference rivals. With 228 left, Furman definitely needs some great field position. I mean, if they start out with poor field position, no timeouts, they could be in trouble. High short kick. <laughs> to the 32-yard line. Well, they have the great field position. Let's see what they can do with it. Willis Sutterth made the catch and the short return, a freshman from Lilburn, Georgia. Furman now with no timeouts, and they need two scores. Intercepted. Intercepted by Aaron Whitaker. Whitaker still on his feet. Finally brought down in midfield. Second interception thrown by Napier. Third turnover for Furman here in the second half. It was a nice play by Whitaker because he falls off into coverage. Keeps his feet. Napier is just looking to his left. Nice coverage. So he just falls off two deep zone. He doesn't have deep coverage. See, he has a nice little cushion. He's just reading the quarterback. So here comes the safety. That's the safety's ball, but Whitaker doesn't give up on the play as he falls back because he should have been in the flat. But when you have deep coverage, there's a soft zone between the corner and the safety. But he knows the situation. They have to throw the football. They're not running, so why should I honor the run? Furman can't stop the clock. They have no timeouts remaining. Revere will keep it and then go down. A loss of three. The victory for Georgia Southern will extend their home winning streak to 37 games. One win shy of their own and still current NCAA 1AA mark of 38 set between 1985 and 1990. Well, as we look at Bobby Johnson, he will fall to two and six versus this Georgia Southern football team. Paul Johnson, the head coach at Georgia Southern, with this win, will now be 20 and 0 at home in Southern Conference games. Peterson. He needed one more step. That's all he needed. I mean, now it's just grind it out. Let's go home healthy. Let's get ready for the next one. I think with the play of this team in the second half, they have regained their form and definitely their mindset of we have to play well to win games because they needed to play well today to defeat 
this Furman ball club, although they have turned the ball over, that is Furman. They played a great game coming in after two weeks of being off, but Georgia Southern, they answered the bell to let everybody know this is why we have been champions before. Peterson again. And it's fourth down. And the clock continues to run. We asked Paul Johnson yesterday if Georgia Southern would beat Furman, should they be number one in the next poll? And his answer was he wasn't even concerned about being number one when they were ranked number one. He's more concerned about winning the Southern Conference Championship and getting a good seed for the upcoming playoffs. Well, they're trying to get home for advantage. Because as we can see, Dave, nice crowds. They play well at home. They've won championships. They don't lose here. So if I'm Paul Johnson, I'm not concerned about the ranking. I'm just trying to play at home to give myself the advantage once the real bullets start to fly. 20 to 10, Georgia Southern wins over Furman. J.R. Revere, two rushing touchdowns. Adrian Peterson over 150 yards on the ground. The kind of shower a coach likes to get. Eagles over the Paladins by 10. What a night for Georgia Southern's Adrian Peterson. His number three jersey retired before the game. Then he and his Eagle teammates went out and retired Furman. 20 to 10 in maybe the biggest game of the year in 1AA football and definitely the game of the year in the Southern Conference. Updated standings in the Southern Conference with a couple of wild games already in the books, including a double overtime win by the Citadel over Chattanooga. Georgia Southern now at 6-1. This victory does not clinch a share of the title in the Southern Conference for Georgia Southern, but it definitely puts them in control of their own destiny. Furman now at 5-1 in the league. They see their opportunity to clinch at least a share of the conference championship, go by the board with their loss here in Statesboro tonight. Appalachian a winner today, now 5-2. Followed by Western Carolina, East Tennessee State, Wofford, Chattanooga, VMI, and the Citadel. I think when you look at Georgia Southern, Dave, a confidence builder because they haven't been playing well, according to Coach Johnson, Paul Johnson. They needed the game to test them mentally and physically, and I think they got that today out of Furman. Furman brought it out of them. Ethan Horton, well, this was a game of momentum swings. Yeah. Georgia Southern took the opening kickoff marched down the field and scored the first touchdown against the Paladins defense in the first quarter all season long. But Furman responded. They had the momentum for quite a while today. Remaining games for Furman. Two of these games are Southern Conference tilts. Home to Wofford on the road to Chattanooga and a season ending non conference game November 24th at Presbyterian College. Georgia Southern has only two games remaining on the 10th next weekend they will be at Elon and then on November 24th at Wofford good chance at Wofford they win that game yeah. they'll clinch at least a share of the Southern Conference Championship these two terrific Backs had great games. Ivory with a touchdown run tonight, over 100 yards. And Adrian yeah. Peterson here at home, in light of the fact they lost last week to East Tennessee State, it was senior night. His jersey was retired. He came through with a big, big effort. Special night. I mean, for everybody here, over 21,000 fans. They got a chance to see Adrian Peterson have a phenomenal game. His last game here at home. I mean, what more can you ask for as a player and as as a fan as we see here 158 yards he didn't play last year in this game because of he had a uh, hyper extended elbow 24 carries Lewis Ivory 122 yards 23 carries and a touchdown both of these backs came to play today I think they gave it their all and they have nothing to be ashamed of and that's why these two guys have been rewarded the Walter Payton Award in 99 and 2000. First time two Walter Payton Award winners have ever faced each other in the same game on different teams. It was quite a night. Represented 1AA football extremely well. 
So the beat goes on for Georgia Southern at home. And for Furman, it's back to the drawing board as they miss a golden opportunity tonight. So for Ethan Horton, I'm Dave Weekly saying so long. From Statesboro, Georgia, where the final score, Georgia Southern 20, Furman 10. Later tonight, for some of you, our college football coverage continues with number one Nebraska and Kansas, followed by Arizona State and number eight ranked Oregon. Kickoff from Lawrence, Kansas is set for 7 o'clock. Others will see the NBA's Charlotte Hornets and New Jersey Nets or the NHL's Nashville Predators and the Dallas Stars. You've been watching Southern Conference football on Fox Sports Net.